Now let's learn about frame elements. We have so far studied trusses, and uh, we found the stiffness matrix and the local coordinate system for a truss to be something like this. When we studied trusses, we said that only the longitudinal forces are considered for these elements. For example, this node or this element would have forces in that direction. And this element would have forces in that direction, only longitudinal. When we studied beams, we said that we neglect the long longitudinal forces. So each node would have force in that direction, which is a shear force. We could call it Fy. And moment, Mz. And this one was the local stiffness matrix for a beam element. So knowing the stiffness matrices for a truss and a beam, we find the relationships between the forces. So here we only have the longitudinal forces for a truss and the longitudinal displacements for the truss. And then for the beam, we had the normal forces and bending moments for each of the two nodes, as well as their um, degrees of freedom, displacements and rotations. And we related them using the surface matrix for a beam. However, most of the structures like bridges are composed of frames. And frames are basically a bunch of beam elements that are connected to each other, like that. And they have their own local coordinate systems. For example, this bar could have its local coordinate system something like this, x hat and y hat. And this bar or this beam would have its own local coordinate system in that direction of x, y, x hat and y hat. So these elements, which could be element 1, element 2, so on and so forth, would have three degrees of freedom. We have F1x, F1y, and M1z for one node, and we have those for the second node for just a single element. So each node has three degrees of freedom, and each element has two nodes. And again, each element will have its own global and local uh, coordinate system. Actually, the global coordinate system is common for all the elements, but each one will have its own local coordinate system, such as this one shown in blue with x hat and y hat. And one of the steps that we will need while studying the frames is to convert the stiffest matrices from the local coordinate system to global coordinate system. So what we're going to need to do is to find relationship between fx, f1, and mz for each node and the frame element and related to its corresponding degree of freedom, dx, dy, and phz using its local coordinate system. As, again, as I said before, we have two nodes and three degrees of freedom per node, so we're looking for a six by six stiffness matrix for a typical frame element.